Once upon a time, there was a guy that wanted to focus his entrepreneurial passion towards something specific. He had tried other projects before, but just couldn't find that perfect match. This guy loved working with his hands and finally had the idea to help people improve their home's curb appeal. So that's exactly what he did. Hey there, all you beautiful people. Welcome to the Creativity Killed the Cat podcast. My name is Andrew Schwalik, and I'm going to be helping you develop creative marketing that won't break the bank. Our episode today is brought to you by Twilful, my digital positioning agency that helps brands drive growth through omni-channel marketing strategies, targeted visual storytelling campaigns, and advanced lead generation tactics. Now it's time for a little fun fact. I think space exploration, and the universe in general, is absolutely fascinating. If I could go back and do life all over again, I'd be an astronaut and force NASA to send me to Mars. How sweet would that be? All right, on with the show. Influencers can really help a brand get more awareness with a targeted audience. Actually, at Twilful, we've been helping a number of our clients with influencer marketing as of late. Honestly, it makes sense. With the COVID-19 pandemic not coming to an end anytime soon, marketing has needed to change. Traditional marketing is less and less effective because people are staying inside and avoiding visiting brick-and-mortar stores. That has meant that the digital marketing world has been flooded with more companies and brands trying to get their message out. Most companies know about Facebook ads and blog posts, but influencer marketing is still new enough where many companies don't even know where to start. Well, I'm going to walk you through exactly how to use influencers to market your product virtually and make it a party. There are a number of bigger brands that do launch events for their new products and invite heavy-hitting influencers to check it out. Usually, these are done in elegant locations where every inch is set up to be Instagrammable. The goal of these events are to introduce media and influencers to the new product and to get them sharing content about it, to get them to generate some buzz and show their audience this cool new thing. While this is often done by large brands with big name influencers, it doesn't have to be. Smaller companies can absolutely take part and should, especially because now it's essentially free. With COVID-19, these physical influencer parties aren't really a thing anymore. They need to go virtual. Here's how you do it. Step one, do some research and get a list of influencers that make sense for your brand. This will take some time because you want to be sure these people align with your company values and image as well as have an audience that includes your target market. If this is your first time hunting down influencers, I'd recommend aiming for people with a range of around 2,000 to 10,000 followers. These are micro-influencers and usually are willing to work with smaller brands at a lower cost. Step 2. Plan a virtual event. Include fun activities and educational topics. However, this is not a seminar, it's a party. Remember that. Have your CEO or founder introduce themselves and talk about the why behind your company. Include a menu or drink list that can be easily made at home. Have a few interesting speakers that will share valuable information. Maybe like ways to expand your audience. Every influencer is always interested in growth. And of course, show off your new product. Remember, your influencer target market will dictate what you include on the agenda for your party. If it's moms, make sure to include activities that they would enjoy. If it's college students, it better be cool and not just another lecture. Step three, create a fun invitation and send it to your list of influencers. The invite needs to pique their attention and entice them to learn more by joining this virtual product release party. Exclusivity is always a good angle to use. Let them know they'll be the first people to try out this new product. Step number four, 
If possible, make sure every RSVP gets a sample of the product to try before the event. Plan ahead because this can get a bit difficult if some people have the product and others don't. You can always let people know you'll be sending them a sample of the product after the party to try once you explain it. You've got a few different ways you can play it. Step number five, host an awesome virtual party. Like I said, make it fun and engaging. You want your influencers to be interested and excited about your product. Now you are ready to host your first product launch party for influencers. Curb Appeal is a one-stop shop for a wide variety of exterior maintenance needs for properties. They offer exterior painting, driveway sealing, power washing, and a number of other services to increase your home's curb appeal. Now that you know a little about curb appeal, let's get creative. In most service businesses, word of mouth is king. It's how people hear about my wedding videography business because I don't do any traditional form of marketing. I expect that to be the same with curb appeal. When they do an awesome job on a project, which seems to be every single home they work on, people tell their connections about that great experience. We want to double down on that concept and make it a marketing tactic. 84% of people trust online reviews as much as they do a recommendation from a friend. How wild is that? Think about your best friend for a second. Based on that statistic, you trust online reviews just as much as the friend you're picturing right now. I'm the same way. I always look at reviews before I buy something new, especially if it costs more than 75 bucks. Now that we know the importance of reviews, here's a simple way for Curb Appeal to get one from every client. There are two main places where people find reviews, Google and Facebook. We want to get as many people as possible leaving reviews on both of these platforms. After you complete a job, what happens? Do you hand them a bill, shake their hand, maybe a friendly chest bump? I'm sure you have some method of closing the project. When you do that action to finish a job, hand them a business card. Now, I'm not talking about one of your basic business cards with a phone number. I'm talking about a business card with instructions on how to leave a review. On this business card, have a nice phrase inviting this person to leave a review. The great part is that you're able to get URLs that take people right to your review pages and encourages them to start a review. Use a link shortener like Bitly and add the URLs to the business card. If you want to get fancy, you can even include QR codes as well. Ultimately, you want to make it as easy as possible for people to get on and leave you a review. Now, I'm also going to turn this concept into tip number two. You've got these cool business cards that you can give your clients after you finish a project that encourages them to leave a review. Dope. I would guess that you have the email of all your clients you work with. If not, that's something easy you can and should get when you both sign the contract to start working. You can use your client emails to create lookalike audiences on Facebook to target more ideal customers, but that's getting a little intense. Instead of just giving that review card to clients, you can also send them a nice email thanking them and asking for a review as well. In an email, the review links will be clickable and will make it even easier for them to leave you a review. Not to mention, with these bit.ly links, you'll be able to see how many people actually enter or click on them. Analytics are so nice. But here's where the real tip comes in. Let's say you've tried this for a month or two and people still aren't leaving reviews. Let's try a little incentive. Obviously, you're able to track who left a review because their name will be attached to each review. Offer people something like a $5 bill or gift card to encourage them to leave that review. It's something small that won't cost you much, but will be something that will excite your clients to drop you that review. Plus, a single review will be much more Plus, a single review will be worth much more than $5. All right, I've got one more marketing tip. Let's stay on the theme of post-project happiness. I'm actually working on something like this for Twilful. After you finish a project, give or send your client a curb appeal care package. 
This doesn't have to be anything crazy, but just a nice branded box or bag that has some cool stuff related to the projects you do. I'm talking things like seeds or bulbs for a cool flower that they can plant in their yard. Maybe a pair of head shears with your company's logo on them. How about a mini guide for how to mow your yard in unique patterns? Feel free to get creative with what you include in this care package. The goal is to establish a positive relationship with your client. I'm sure you do that with your great work, but finish it off by going big. People love free things and gifts, especially when it's a surprise. Plus, this will make your clients even more likely to tell a friend and be a repeat customer. Not to mention, this care package helps them up their curb appeal even more. Now that's some full circle branding right there. Boom. Now Curb Appeal has some creative marketing ideas that will inspire clients to spread the word and leave great reviews. I'm just looking forward to seeing what they put in that Curb Appeal care package. If you want to check out Curb Appeal, you can find them on Facebook by searching Curb Appeal Ohio. Well, that's all folks. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Creativity Killed the Cat. I hope you had as much fun as I did and were able to take away some creative marketing knowledge that you can start using right now. If you did enjoy the show, I'd love you forever if you left a review on iTunes. It helps more people hear about my little podcast, so thank you. Now, if you're stuck and need a little extra creative juice, head over to andrewschwalik.com to find some more content that will continue to get your creative gears turning. Keep saving those cats. I'll see you all in the next episode.